Hi, welcome to the Cook's Domain. Today, we're gonna to make fresh pasta. Now it's not a difficult recipe, but it's not easy to make. And the reason for that is, it's one of these skills that you learn, I guess. You're gonna to have to learn the touch and the feel, and it's very, very difficult to express that on camera. So what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna try and express this in as detailed a way as possible so that you don't get the many miserable failures that I got when I was learning how to do this. Um, and it is a process. Unfortunately, I think um, with all the videos I've seen uh, on how to make pasta, um, it's like, just do this and then do that and add this and then throw that in and then do this and then you'll know when it's ready. And it just doesn't work like that. Also, I've always struggled with the way the recipes are given. To this much flour, add an egg or two eggs or three eggs. And eggs come in all different shapes and sizes and um, different weights. And so today I'm gonna to give you what I think is a recipe that works, but it's going to be a bit of a learning process for you guys to get it right. So that the measurements will be exactly what you need to get this done right. And then from that, it's a learning process for you guys to figure out what it should uh, feel like, I guess, when you're kneading the dough and uh, getting it ready for rolling and uh, etc. But we're going to do our best to be as detailed as possible. Unfortunately, any other video out there, I think the measurements are not very good um, because whenever anything just says and add an egg, to me that's crazy. The hydration of the flour is very important um, with anything that you do. Um, so um, anything to do with flour, in my opinion, is a science. It's, it's, we're, we're, we're coming outside the realms of cooking. It's a science. If you're not getting your measurements correct, it's just not going to come out the way that you expect it. So I'm going to give you absolutely correct measurements that I know definitely work. And beyond that, um, it's going to be just a, a learning process. But I'm going to be as detailed and as descriptive as I can possibly be with language and video footage for you guys to get this really good. Okay, so the rule with pasta generally is uh, for like every uh, cup of flour, you need um, an egg or something. <clears throat> Firstly, we really need to stop cooking by volume. Right? It's not a good way to cook. Um, everything has different densities and things like powdery things can really be packed in. Uh, so your one cup and my one cup of flour could be completely different. And this is not the way to do things. Right? Not that I don't use volumes sometimes. If I'm using liquid or water, you can use a you, volume metric because you can't really compress that anymore. Uh, but other things, grainy things, which have gaps with you know air, I mean, depending on how they're packed as you pour it in, will create different measurements. So it's not the way to do it. We want to use weight. So <clears throat> the weight measurement uh, general rule of thumb is for every 100 grams of flour is one egg. And that sort of works. I have made pasta that way, and sometimes it, it, the, you know, it, when I was learning, it was far too dry, and I didn't recognize that it was far too dry, and, and I made crappy pasta. Sometimes my leg, eggs could be pretty large, and my, my mixture was far too wet, and I made springy, weird, crappy pasta. So we wanna get this spot on. So here's how I do it. For every 100 grams of flour, I want 62 grams of egg. Now, if I'm only making 100 grams and I don't have 62 grams of, an, of, of egg, and I won't really know that until I've cracked the egg open, uh, because the shell densities could be completely different. Uh, if I don't have 62, I will top it up. If I have too much, I'll take some out. I'll beat it and I'll take some out. So it's that, that's the way we're going to do it. So today we're gonna to do 200 grams of pasta. Uh, sorry, 200 grams of flour. So to that we want uh, 124 grams of egg. So let's crack some eggs. So my first egg only weighs 50.9. You see? That's 12 grams off. That's a, that's a lot of difference. So two eggs were at 107. So we have a rough idea that our eggs are roughly between 50, 55 grams uh, uh, each. So to crack a third egg would be waste of some eggs. So there's no point adding another egg to this. So to get to my 124, I'm now gonna add just plain cold water. 
There we go, 124 grams. I'm now going to lightly beat the egg. So now we want our 100 gra uh, 200 grams of flour. There we go, 200 grams. Okay, so we now have our 200 grams of flour, our 124 grams of fluid, which is mostly egg, just topped up with a little bit of water. Now, if you could get this spot on with egg, that's probably best, but I, that's highly unlikely. So just add a little bit of water just to get it to where you want it to get to. And that's pretty much all the ingredients you need. Um, but I also add a little sea salt. If you have fine sea salt, use that. If you don't, if you have like uh, coarse crystals like I do, then I'm gonna use my uh, pestle and mortar just to grind it down into a powder. And um, you don't need a lot here, it's just a pinch of this. And we're gonna add it to our flour. Okay, so that's basically how much I'm gonna use. It's probably a little more than a quarter teaspoon, I guess. And just sprinkle that into our flour. And then tip this out onto your work surface. Make sure your work surface has been washed and cleaned. Now, the common wisdom is just to like create a well in the middle. You don't actually have to do this well. It doesn't do anything. You just wanna mix the egg and the flour together. This is the the popular method. You can just pour everything on top of each other. It doesn't make a difference, up to you. Okay, so what I do now is I pour the egg into the middle and start to incorporate some flour from the edges and bring it into the egg. And this is all well and good. It's like keeping it simple and clean. But what's gonna happen is, is one of these edges is gonna break and it's all gonna flow and it doesn't really matter because this is the fancy way to do it. And to be honest, not that necessary. You can just as easily just go like this and start mixing it all in and bringing it all up. Your flour is gonna absorb all of this liquid. So there's not an issue with how you're doing it. Don't think you're gonna lose any of that liquid and not hydrate your flour. You will. So just keep bringing it all in and the flour is gonna pick everything up. Now it's going to become quite sticky. Right, I wanted to mention something about the eggs. Now eggs are used for a, for a number of different reasons in cooking. And when it's about emulsifying and bringing together and basically being a kind of a glue, then use the cheapest eggs you can buy. Like Cakes, for example. I don't want eggy flavors in my cakes. And I find cheap eggs don't taste of anything. But I do want what eggs do, you know, that coagulation, if you will, or that bringing together of ingredients, that emulsification that it does. I want that, and all eggs do that, even the cheap, non-tasting ones. So what I do in situations like that, I buy the cheap ones that I'm happy to buy. Now everyone has different ethical and moral concerns. I'm not going to judge anyone. I don't buy everything organic, for example. And if that is battery eggs for you, then, then buy battery eggs. If though you're just happy to buy the cheapest free range eggs available, then do that. Any supermarket free range egg is perfectly acceptable and tasteless. So um, just do that. However, when making pasta, the egg contributes flavor. And for that, I do not use cheap eggs. I actually use the most expensive and best eggs I can buy for when I wanna make pasta because the egg will definitely contribute flavor. All right, so you wanna start bringing this together now. So I buy, if I can, good, nice, delicious organic ones not all organic are the same. Again, organic from most supermarkets are just as tasteless as their free range ones. If anything, I would avoid those places. Um, but if you have a local farm that does um, produce free range or organic eggs, you'll find that they are far superior. Okay, so now we wanna do, we wanna start bringing all this together. Start mixing it in. 
you want the parts of the dough that is far stickier which means it's wetter to start sticking and hydrating the more dry ones and there's loads of those because look that's all dry but here in the middle here this stuff is really sticky and wet so you want to be spreading that around and picking up the dry stuff you know, there are fancy ways to knead this, but I want you guys to understand what is actually happening here. We're spreading this out, getting to the wetter dough so that it picks up the drier dough and the liquid will find its way through and into those. We want this to be a homogeneous lump, meaning everything the same, rather than some dry bits and some wet bits. So just keep bringing everything in, squishing it down, and you feel the sticky parts. So here, this is really sticky here. So I know that's quite wet in comparison to some of this drier stuff. So I push it down, I push it in, I pick it up, I fold it, fold those drier bits in. Okay, so just keep doing this until you incorporate everything and then just use it to pick up these dry bits and then fold those in okay so once we have incorporated everything and we have this nice lump we have something that we can work with here's where the hard work starts Look at this carefully, look how it looks. See, it's all dimpled and it's rough to our fingers, uh, to the feeling, you know, it's, um, and if you spread it a little bit, you can feel like little lumpy, roughy type parts. So we now need to knead. Now kneading is very simple, right? Just basically press down and push out. Fold it in, press down and push out. Fold it in, press down fold it and you're going to be doing this for 10 minutes at least in Italy it's mostly grandmothers that are doing this okay they've been doing it a long time so their arms are pretty trained for it and try and use something that doesn't have uh, as you can see here where I'm doing it this this is moving an awful lot so I'm going to go off camera now and just use the actual counters on my kitchen so that I don't have this um, and I'll come back to you and show you what this should start to look like after 10 minutes okay so after 10 minutes of kneading it's got a far smoother feel to it, but it's still not enough. So we're gonna to have to keep kneading a lot more. Uh, so now we're gonna go into five minute stages until we get this where we want it. Okay, so it's been another five minutes and it just feels so smooth, so silky. I mean, it can do with a bit more work, but we have the other problem that we're gonna be running into now, is it drying out and we don't want that. So this is pretty good as it is. So about 15 minutes of work, that will get you roughly where you want to get. This is feeling really nice. Uh, now, we need to wrap this up tightly with plastic wrap, cling film as we say here, or saran wrap as some people seem to call it. Whatever you call it, we want to wrap it up in this stuff tightly. We do not want this to dry out. And we're going to put it into the fridge for 30 minutes for it to relax and uh, do its thing before we use it. Okay, so after our pasta's been in the fridge for about 30 minutes or, or longer, you know, it doesn't matter if you leave it longer. Uh, we can now take off the cling film. That's gonna be a little bit sticky. So we wanna put down a very thin film of, or a thin uh, layer of flour put a little bit on the dough as well and a little bit on our rolling pin and all we want to do is now is roll this out and we're only rolling it out so that we can make it thin enough for it to pass through our pasta machine now it is possible for you to just keep rolling this out yourself and cut your pasta ribbons, shapes, whatever. Uh, but personally, I prefer to go through the machine. OK, 
10. And that's good enough. All I want to do is take a knife, cut this down the middle. So I have two strips that I can now then pass through the pasta machine. Okay, so I've got my two pieces that I've split. This one I've put back into cling film because I want it to not dry out. And we'll leave that to one side while we work with this piece. So all we have to do is set our pasta roller to the biggest setting, which is number one. So it's the widest setting. And we're gonna run our pasta two times through number one. Now we can up it to the next number, number two, and run it through there. Okay, now it's got quite long. So what I do is I fold it in half, squish it down on, it, on itself, so we don't get any separation. And what this does now is it's gonna help giving it more strength that, so it's not soft and mushy. So we need to go back now down to number one and run it through number one again. And one more time. Now we can run it on number two again. Now we can move down to number three. Number four. And now down to our final thickness for me, for the pasta that I'm making, I'm making papadelli. <coughs> Number five. And there we have it. That's ready to be cut. Okay, so once we've rolled it out to the thickness we want, we want to give it a light dusting of flour. And we want to spread that along the entire thing. So just put it on there and start spreading that. This is going to help it not stick to each other when we come to cut it and also when we're trying to dry it. So spread that flour all over, and then we can now turn it over. Do the same on the other side. Just a little sprinkling of flour. And again, spread that around. We just want to roll this up so we can create our pappardelle strips. But if you're making fettuccine, tagliatelle, whatever it is you're making, the method is the same. You're just making it narrower. Um, this is pappardelle that's quite wide. Let's just roll this. There we go. So if you have a pasta machine, a pasta roller that's probably got a fettuccine tagliatelle cutter, you can just run the entire strip through that and it will do it all for you. But I'm doing pappardelle and I don't have a cutter that's wide enough. So I want this to be quite wide. So I'm gonna run the knife through there. And if I unroll this now, there's our pappardelle. We can now put this to one side to let that dry. Let's do our next one. And don't forget to unravel. We don't want it sticking together. I'm putting it to one side. The other thing you can do, obviously, is to put this all on a on a rack to dry. If you have one, uh, another popular one or one I like to use, just get one of those clothes horse type racks. Just give that a bit of a clean, and then you can just put your pasta on that to. Um, to dry out. And there we go, we've got our fettuccine ready to go. Beautiful pasta. 
Now, if you cook with fresh pasta, just remember that you will not get it al dente. I think it's a bit of a, a supermarket conspiracy to sell people expensive pasta by, by selling fresh pasta. There is a place for fresh pasta, of course. Um, tortellini and ravioli and all that, that can all be done fresh. And it doesn't usually have al dente. But things like this, spaghetti, fettuccine, tagliatelle, even in Italy, they will eat these dry. Uh, well, they will you know, cook with them from dry. They don't cook this fresh. This will be soft and springy and weird. Um, so even in Italy, the families are drying this stuff. So don't go wasting your money on fresh spaghetti. That's a nonsense. Okay, so now that our pasta has dried, and that is our homemade pasta right there, our, uh, our pappardelle strips, we're now ready to uh, cook it up. So all we need to do is get some water on the boil. Now you need about one liter of water to every 100 grams of pasta that you want to cook. And you need to salt the water. I'm using um, a rock salt here. Okay, so now that we've got the water on a rapid boil, we can now start putting our pasta in. And I'm trying to be as delicate as possible because I don't want to break the strands. Just give it a little stir to stop it from sticking to each other. Now Italians say that the water should be as salty as the sea. I've done that. Don't do that. That's just uh, Mediterranean uh, exaggeration. Italians are like Greeks, I guess. They just mean get some salt in there. Uh, but don't do it as salty as the sea. I've done that. The pasta absorbs way too much salt and it's not pleasant. Now for bolognese, this is this pasta, pappardelle pasta or tagliatelle is the best pasta you can use. It really helps hold and um, you know such a meaty sauce. Spaghetti is really for very delicate sauces um, like uh, white wine cream sauces, carbonara. It's okay with um, uh, Alfredo oiled garlic type sauces. Then spaghetti is fantastic for those. Uh, but for a meat sauce, you really need pappardelle or Tagliatelle, fettuccine, something like that. Something that can carry the sauce. Pasta is ready. Now we want to start using it immediately. So I'm going to move it to one side. Bring our pan back. So now we can start finishing this off. So what we're going to do is add a couple of spoons of our bolognese. Put that in the bottom there. And the heat on to like a medium heat. And you want to start bringing it over the pasta and putting it into the bowl. Don't worry about draining it too much. It's okay to bring some of that pasta water over. That starch will just help loosen our sauce a little bit. And it will also make the dish so delicious. So because we're going to do another minute or so of cooking here, it's fine for the pasta to be just a little uh, stiffer than you require because it will finish cooking here in the pan. Okay, so let's start mixing this around. We've got a little bit of that starchy water in there as well. Look at the way that carries that sauce. And there we go, I think this is ready. We can now serve. And there we have it. A beautiful plate of pappardelle pasta with our bolognese ragu. All we've got to do now is try it and see how good it is. Now, before we do that, we want to add just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So start giving that a little scraping here. Let's give it a go. Oh God, I'm looking forward to this. Especially the pasta. As Italians would do. That is so good. 
What makes this truly exceptional here for me isn't just that the, the sauce is incredible, it's the pasta. That is so different from what you get in a store, from that dry stuff we get in stores. It is soft, it is light, but springy with a bite. It's unlike pasta in a box, it really is. It's something so much better, so much more delightful with such a bit of flavor. Just look at how that carries the sauce. Mm. I can't tell you how good this is, I really can't. It is exceptional. Anyway, as always, Thank you for watching.